Can you hear me all right? Awesome, thank you. Um, yes, so I'm Florian Scholz. I'm from Bremen, Germany, and uh, today I would like to talk a bit about uh, MDN browser compatibility data. Um, for the last eight years or so, I'm working on MDN. Uh, MDN is uh, Mozilla uh, developer.mozilla.org. Um, it's probably, what's that? Yeah, closer. closer to the mic? All right, uh, let's see. Like, th like this, maybe? No? All right. Um, where was I? Um, good? All right. Um, so MDN is a documentation site where uh, a few tech writers and a large community um, tries to document the web. And that means uh, we, will, we are writing about uh, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, uh, HTTP, and basically all the technologies that uh, the browser runs. And uh, we, we do this in, in a wiki form uh, on developer.mozilla.org. And uh, last year, we were, uh, after a long time, also awarded with a prize uh, by Slash Data, um, where they said, OK, um, MDN is a really great site in terms of developer satisfaction. So it means that you guys probably like the stuff that we are writing about. and. Uh, we, we've actually did a lot of work over the last uh, 13 years when this content was first open sourced. So uh, this is how it actually started, um, like a classic wiki in 2005. Uh, it was uh, based on MediaWiki. Uh, Mitchell Baker was able in 2005 to take a few of the Netscape contents where technical writers from Netscape wrote about JavaScript and open sourced that uh, into a wiki. And uh, this was the layout in 2005 where basically all the Mozilla developers put on all the stuff um, that they developed um, about all the technologies they have invented, like JavaScript and so forth. Um, when I joined uh, the team in 2010, more or less, um, to, to write about uh, web technology, MDN was actually drastically changing from uh, being like a wiki where everyone was dumping content into something where uh, a small team of um, passionate um, web developers that were really also hyped by all the HTML5 and CSS3 technologies that came up um, to create a uh, documentation hub for uh, open web technologies. So the scope was kind of narrowed down from everyone dumps all the contents on, on MDN, on the uh, developer center, to um, let's make a coherent website where we document web technologies. And uh, during the last year, we have even changed a bit more the, the layout of the site. Um, so for example, this is uh, something that recently landed, um, and it is a bit also inspired from uh, W3 Schools. That's the site that everyone is told to don't use it, use MDN, because, well, uh, we're having the, the more correct content. But what W3 Schools does very good is um, delivering you know, quick sample code quite fast and easy. And we're trying to address this with our new uh, interactive editor that we've put on the top of pages. And uh, the, generally, there's two types of um, developers. There's the concept-driven ones that really like to read a lot of content and understand the concepts behind a CSS property or a method. But then there's also the ones that just want to perform an action, the action-driven developers. And they basically want to do one thing, and that is copy-paste code. And this is happening with that. Um, but today, I want to focus uh, on one particular project of the MDN team, which is about compatibility. And compatibility is not only important for MDN, uh, but also for Mozilla, we want to uh, encourage everyone to use a variety of browsers and not only write website for one browser, which used to be the IE problem, which now probably turns into the Chrome problem. Um, and on MDN, what we've, what we've done so far is we've provided these kind of tables. Um, I guess a lot of you have seen those. Uh, this is a table uh, that displays compatibility information about the CSS background property. Um, you can also see a few sub-features of that same uh, property, like multiple backgrounds and SVG images as a background. And it, it, we used to have this table in the wiki for, like, I don't know, five, six, seven years now. And uh, 
if you've ever edited MDN, which is, by the way, easy as just signing up an account and you can edit, it's a wiki, so everyone is, is able to uh, edit and, and change things on MDN. And this is how it looks like, or it looked like, um, when editing these combo tables. Um, this is a static HTML table where, you know, the versions and, you know, little helpers that we wrote around those uh, versions, uh, this is how it was stored. Now, there's a, there's a lot of problems with this. So imagine this static table being on all of the MDN reference pages that we have, and we're talking about maybe 10,000 pages. There's, I don't know, 400 CSS properties. There's like an amazing amount of APIs and uh, HTTP headers and all that, and all these pages had static uh, information in there uh, about compatibility. So we couldn't mass edit the data. We couldn't mass add data. Um, we couldn't reuse the data. Like, convert data is something many people are interested in, but it's kind of locked in our wiki in those tables. And when we want to change this, we have to go into all the pages and, and, and change stuff. Um, we can also not validate data. So as I just said, everyone can edit MDN and put a, say, Firefox 6.3 version for the CSS background property, which is nonsense, as Firefox 6.3 never existed. Um, and because of the nature of the wiki, which in the M team we are also considering rethinking at the moment, um, everyone can just change things um, without any further discussion, um, which, is, which is a problem when talking about you know, factual information like compatibility. There's not actually an opinion around this. It's just it has started to work in this version, or it has not, and it's another version, or it's not supported at all. We can also have no automation here. Like we could probably write some scripts using uh, source labs or browser stack, automatically uh, generating information on when something was supported. Um, and finally, the MDN team is largely, uh, or the MDN website is largely uh, sponsored by uh, Mozilla, uh, and we are we have a few employees, including me, working on the site. Um, but we want to encourage and. Uh, invite the other browser vendors as well to document with us together the open web. And uh, we've addressed uh, a few of these points. Uh, the last one, for example, uh, in October uh, last year, in October 2017, um, Mozilla, we reached out over the last year to uh, a few other industry leaders, uh, namely Microsoft, Google, the W3C, and Samsung. Uh, and, and they now form with us together the product advisory board for MDN. What this means is that all these companies are now helping us to document the web because we, we are all doing uh, things on the web. We all, like the Microsoft and Google, they are building browsers. The W3C uh, creates the standards that we are also documenting on MDN. So finally, after a few years, we came together and, and formed this board. Um, and this will, this will help us with the whole documentation and also with the, with the combat data. And then what we, what we finally also came up with is we want to, we want to get out the combat data out of the wiki. We want to kind of liberate it, break it free from the static tables into a repository. So what we came up with is a repository that you can find on GitHub. It's uh, github.com slash mdn slash browser combat data. And what we did there is um, we stored all this data that we, that we have in our reference pages in a structure that looks very much like this. So on the left-hand side, you can see like the folder for CSS properties, so stuff like uh, align self or animation or backdrop filter. And in each of those files, you have a JSON structure uh, where you have you know, some identifiers saying that, hey, this is a CSS property, it's the background property. Uh, you can also, you have a back reference to the MDN URL, and then there's a support object uh, for the various browsers and their versions. Um, and we also provide this as an NPM package, as it is just JavaScript or JSON data, so um, you can reuse this in, in Node.js as well. And then access it like it is shown here, and you will get back the, the JSON that is stored in our Comfort Store. And now when, en when editing MDN, it's, it's a lot simpler because we don't, have to, you know, we don't have to edit every page anymore. We can just 
mass edit in our GitHub repository, and on, on our pages can call a query like this and get the data from the data store. And thanks to this, we were able to recently redesign those tables also. So we got rid of the tab switching from mobile to uh, and desktop uh, to show all mobile and, browser, mobile and desktop browsers at the same time, because many of the web developers are you know, having mobile-first approaches and the mobile data is uh, as important as well. We've added Node.js to the tables too because, well, it's not, JavaScript is not only in the browser anymore, but there's Node.js. Um, and so we, we kind of did this redesign, like, I think it was last week only, and, uh, you know, the new, some of, very, a, a lot of the pages are now showing up with, uh, with these redesigned tables. And the good thing is, um, the French pages used to have the static tables as well. So in our old world, it could have been that the French version had some, had some combat information. The English page had some combat information that it all was like different information and all across the wiki, which was terrible. And now the, the, the French version can also just call into the data store and display a localized combat table. Um, so this is what, what MDN has done to kind of set free this data. So yes, we are open source already, our content is open source, but the, the, the compat information was still kind of locked in in the static tables. Now that is set free, uh, it's open data, and you can reuse it. So if any of you has a project um, or is interested in writing plugins for Atom, Sublime, VS Code, or if anyone is you know, familiar with writing bots on GitHub, uh, you could imagine, you know, using this data to write uh, helpers for your project uh, to, ch to check against compatibility because the data has a lot of information on, on what is supported in which version of the browsers. So a Mozillian called Eduardo Bussas, uh, he, he did something useful with this data and uh, you can use this maybe for inspiration. Um, this is DevTools, Firefox DevTools, and he has written an extension uh, adding a new tab called compatibility. And what it does is it analyzes the uh, CSS files of your website and gives you information on uh, what kind of properties you have used. And uh, it will display you, you know, a similar like compat matrix uh, in, inside DevTools saying, okay, you've used this and that property and it doesn't work in IE9, so you, you will not be compatible 100% there with, with IE9, for example. Um, so let's, let's have a little bit of a look now that you hopefully feel a bit inspired uh, of, of what you could do with this data set, what's, what's in the data, right? Um, so for now, we, we, we're still not completely finished the migration from this static table thing into the data store. We're about like 45% done. But right now, what we have is, is a mixture of, of this. Um, so there's CSS, HTML, HTTP, JavaScript, and web, web extensions, compat data in there. Um, and this already gives you a bit of a sense of how large these technologies are. Um, so web extensions has a lot of APIs, so there are a lot of uh, data points here. Um, same for CSS, all the properties, the selectors, add rules, and so forth. HTTP is a bit smaller because we mostly have compat data for HTTP headers in here. Now, I've looked a little bit deeper into the data for CSS, and uh, if you're into, I don't know, data science -y things. Uh, you could also, you know, analyze this data set and, and you know, look at how CSS developed uh, over time. So, for example, when we had Firefox 10, uh, Firefox 1 10 years ago, there were like 90 CSS properties. And because this data has all the, the all this, this, this copper data store has all the Firefox versions and, and I've looked into it when there was a little spike. So in Firefox 16, for example, there were uh, a lot of new CSS properties, and I was like, what's, what's going on there? So it turns out uh, they implemented CSS animations back then, or later Flexbox. So um, over the last like 50 or 60 Firefox versions, CSS got more complex and complex, adding more features over time. So, um, and this was, I, I could, you know, make this chart only out of our data, which was kind of interesting, I thought at least. Um, one thing I, I need to mention, though, is that the data is, um, as we have just started to migrate them, we have not yet polished them or validated a lot what's in there. So the chart that you've just seen about the CSS data, uh, I was using the Firefox versions because 
our data is actually most complete for Firefox because on the wiki, uh, well, we used to maintain the data for Firefox uh, mostly and not so much for other browsers. So what you can see here is uh, a lot of the data is uh, either the version is unknown or the, uh, the compatibility is unknown at all. So, um, but as it, as it is open data, um, I can only, you know, have a call to action here. You can help us making this data more awesome, which will make the tables displayed on MDN more awesome, which will make the tool that Eduardo wrote in DevTools more awesome, which will make the tool that some of you may come up with more awesome. So, um, yeah, that is that. And with that, that was Browser Combat Data, open data brought to you by the MDN team. Thank you. Any questions? Yes? Yes, I know that. Yes. So we looked into Can I Use. Uh, Can I Use has about 300 features uh, listed on the page, and that's awesome. Uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful site. Um, our data set is it's a lot bigger, and we're not even done yet. So um, yes, we're working together with Can I Use, and there might be some collaboration in the future. Um, but right now, the data that we want to set free from the wiki is just a lot more richer, about 10 to 20 times more richer. And we want to preserve that information. And so as a first step, we are putting that into a uh, repository, uh, and but yeah, future collaboration. Awesome, let's do it. Right. Right. So the thing that's the things that. Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> so the question is about the collaboration between Can I Use and and this data set, and you know competing um, or you know double effort. Um, and the thing is, uh, this data set is a lot more richer because we have all the information from over 6,000 MDN wiki pages. And Can I Use has only about 300 pages listed at the moment. And both, both projects are kind of relying on, also on, on you know, manual pull requests, uh, updating the data. What we want to bring in here is we want to kind of have official status using our partners from the MDN product advisory board, uh, putting in official version numbers when something is supported and also adding uh, on top of the data some validation and automation uh, you know, that, that actually tells us the truth whether or not something is supported. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm open to collaboration with Can I Use as well. And uh, yeah, sure. More questions? No? All right, then thank you.